Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. What's going on? What's up, everybody? Hello. Hey, everybody. Hello, what's up? Have a beautiful Monday, you know? Yeah, beautiful for in tornado season right now. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. How we doing? Good, how you doing? I'm well. Doing well. What's going on, everybody? Hey, Carlos, what's up? Hi. Hey. Going. Hey, everyone. Happy Monday. What's happening? I, I, I got too much sauce. That's why it be dripping out. Oh. Hey Eric, at some point I have a question about it's kind of limited. Um, yeah, I don't know if I should ask it now or later. No, right now is the perfect time, and if I don't have the answer for you, I'm sure someone else in here can help. So go ahead. Awesome. Uh, so like I have a couple of distributors that have like you know kind of like large catalog, like a hundred thousand items. Yeah. And then when I try to run the search, everything gets condensed. I mean everything has UPCs and everything, and it comes down to like ten thousand, and then. I put very broad, uh, let's just say criteria, like rank less than 350,000 and profit like a dollar. And still when I put those numbers in, like I almost get no result after that. And then when I remove those, I can see more products, you know, the, 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 there's some work around. So that's why I don't get it. Like, is it, uh, is it just kind of limited the issue or? I had, I had a similar issue and I, I figured out that a lot of the listings Excellent. that were being pulled from Amazon were, were were bad listings. So if you actually take the filters out and go through them, when you click the link that it's giving you and it takes you mm -hmm. to Amazon, you'll see, oh, this isn't even the right listing. Then search for the the right listing and a lot of times it's, it's a better uh, better numbers. So how do you account for that? Because obviously that's the thing, like if there are a hundred thousand items here, like try to go to one then one by one is just i mean i guess if it, it, it has to be done i want to do it like you know it's the nature of the business but the, how do you account for that type of error and also on top of everything is there do you guys know any sort of feature because something else that i've noticed that a lot of these products for example will not have five for example if it's a five pack five will pack. not have it on yeah. the title will have it on the picture yeah so i assume the software does not read it no nope. And it will tell you like, so those are just things that you you kind of do manually, right? There's yeah. No work around. Yeah. So you got to go in and update a lot of those pack sizes, and that's probably why you're not seeing a lot of profitable items because initially the products at like a pack size of one, when really it's like a five pack, you know. And also right. right now everything's going up in price, right? So when you look at a keeper chart, you're like, wait, this even this product that. You know, I think I'm making a dollar on, all of a sudden it, it, it skyrocketed in price. Exactly. And it's like, is this going to be consistent? Is it not going to be consistent? And we're at an interesting time right now, but to answer your Scan Unlimited question, it's a lot of plug and play. Like Scan Unlimited is, is, is an end all be all solution for product research where you scrape a file and you instantly find 20 great products and you add them to a purchase order. There needs to be additional research through title searches. And a lot of that comes through experience as well. You know, the more you do it, the more you start to recognize brands that you're like, you know what, I'm going to look further into this brand because I know it sells really well. And I've looked at all their listings before, you know, so it's a combination of experience and getting that first purchase order or two in. Because once you get those purchase orders in, you now have items that are easy to reorder because you'll have real sales data on them. You know, so then you could go back and if you got a great selling two pack, you might've missed the three pack and the six pack or the 12 pack, you know? So it's, it's a more hands-on approach to find those killer listings because everybody's just scraping the file and looking for the winners, right? It's the people who are willing to take the extra step and spend the extra couple hours that are really going to come out on top. Eric, if I could sure. add to that. Yeah, please. Um, so I spoke last week about the distributor that sent us a, you know, a full catalog book. I ended up kind of just browsing through and looking up basically each brand. So brands I've never even heard of, but I just typed in the brand, looked at, you know, what has multiple FBA offers and then kind of went from there, sent the distributor like, you know, for pricing 20 different items maybe. And then I think seven of them came back with potential profit ended up put, placing an order for like four of them. We ended up having like a $4,000 PO from this distributor first time. So, I mean, it came back not even using Scan Unlimited, more or less, just like you said though, putting in that, that you know, upfront grunt work to get it done. Yeah, I think, I think the upfront work is what really 
separates the people who are placing, you know, two, three thousand dollar orders and the people who are placing eight, ten thousand dollar orders. Or even if at scale, you know, the, the company placing fifteen, twenty thousand and the company placing forty, fifty thousand dollar orders. It's the people who are going to really dive into these catalogs and spend that extra three hours. Something we do with our buyers is once in a while, today it's on my my notes right here, I gotta go through one of the orders they submitted because it just didn't look big enough. Like I know our average order from this company is about 4,000 ASINs, it's 2,500 ASINs. So that's an instant flag to me, like, you know what, this buyer probably just breezed through this, didn't spend any time doing additional research. And like, I need to have a conversation with them because in our business, that's unacceptable, you know? And in your business, it should be unacceptable as well. So it's just putting in that extra effort. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, how are you guys feeling about the keep of charts? I feel like every time I've been doing product research, like keep of charts, it's all jacked up. Like the last like few weeks, especially the prices has been like spiking up and it's hard for me to really know like what products I should be rolling the dice on or not. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's definitely an interesting time. A lot of the products we're ordering, we're being a little more conservative uh, because I'm sure a lot of you see about three to four weeks ago, the prices on a lot of products skyrocketed, right? But also on a lot of products, they got very competitive. So the price is beginning to decrease, you know? And the reason why is a lot of people still haven't caught up with uh, a few things. The FBA pick and pack fee increase of 5%. A lot of people haven't caught up to that. And also just cost of goods in general, we're seeing about a, a five to 10% increase from our vendors. So it's like all that comes into play and the prices begin to rise. But Amazon, most Amazon sellers are absolutely clueless. You know, they don't have groups where they can communicate. They started a business in their basement and they don't understand what's happening with the supply and demand in the Amazon marketplace. So they drive prices down instead of just waiting it out a couple more weeks when all the prices will be much higher. So we're definitely in an interest, interesting time in Amazon, but it's also a great time to make a lot of money because there's there's opportunity out there that people aren't capitalizing on. And I think that's just an everyday thing. Eric, do you think some people are, are not aware and kind of just, you know, for lack of a better term, losing their on it? Or is there something else to it? Because I kind of relate to, to seeing those keep charts. There's multiple that are super competitive and multiple that have just skyrocketed and kind of, you know, same thing on our end. We kind of just took a little gamble on the ones that have skyrocketed, you know, on a slimmer chance. And we are profitable on some of those. So what yeah. are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, listen, it, it varies, you know, for some people, they might be clueless to what they're doing. For other people, it might be a strategic move within their business based on their inventory and the need for, for future cash flow to reinvest into other products. So they're dropping the price on certain products just to kind of get that cash back. And then other products are increasing in price, but the cost of good is increasing as well. So it kind of just evens out. Great, great call. Another great call. Appreciate all of you. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you got any questions, hit us in the Facebook group and uh, we'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. Hi, doll. All right. Have a good evening. Good night. I'll see you at the top. Good night, night. everyone. Hey, lit.